holiday nutrition series. Whether you are here for a workshop or a cooking demonstration, get ready to experience a fun, interactive, and educational session. This evening, you will get nutritional tools and cooking tips for you and your family on how to enjoy the holiday season while maintaining your wellness goals. Good evening, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining us for our celebration of happy, healthy, how, uh, not Halloween, that was yesterday, earlier this week, happy, healthy holiday cooking. My name is Julia Demery and I'm a health and, wealth, health and wellness specialist with the Department of Parks and Recreation. Before we begin, we're going to go over a few housekeeping items. You should see a microphone icon at the bottom of your screen like you see here on this screen. You'll need to click this icon to mute yourself. We ask that you remain muted to limit any distractions during the program. Next, I'm going to draw your attention to the camera icon. You will use this to turn your camera off and on. Please be mindful that when your camera is on, all participants joining us this evening will be able to see your screen. You have the option to keep your camera on or turn it off, but remember that we want to minimize distractions throughout the program and keep the focus on the presentation being provided. Next, I'm going to show you how to pin a participant. To do this, you will need to click on the show participants icon. In the participant column, select the individual you would like to view on your screen and then click or tap the three dot icon to reveal a menu. From the drop down right. menu, select I'm in my ear, my headset. Pin for me. Roz, I'm just gonna mute you for one second. <laughs> and then the pin participant becomes the focus in your view and only in your view, regardless of the speaker. To unpin, repeat these three steps and select unpin. Repeat the same process to pin an additional participant. Please note that if you're viewing this from a web browser, the PowerPoint presentation will be in a smaller window at the top or bottom of your screen. Next, I'm going to show you a new Teams feature of how to put on live closed captioning. To do this, you'll click on those three dots for more options. Then you'll scroll down and find the option that says turn on live captions. Then you'll start to see captions at the bottom of your screen. You may choose this to turn the feature on if needed. Finally, the last icon I'm going to tell you about is the chat icon. This will allow you to ask questions throughout the program. To type a question, you'll click on the icon like you see on the screen to bring up the chat box, and it should take you to what you see next. Once you see the chat box like on the screen here, there will be a space for you to type your question in. Hit enter and we will see your question on the screen. Please ask as many questions as you'd like throughout the program, and there will be time at the end for us to answer any that we may have missed. We're looking forward to a great discussion. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Rosalind Law, our trained professional for this evening. Rosalind Law has education that has equipped her with extensive knowledge in holistic nutrition, health coaching, clinical herbs, and preventative health. Drawing on these skills and her knowledge of different dietary theories, she works with her clients to make them feel, make them make, help them make lifestyle changes that produce real and lasting results. Rosalind Law received her training as a health coach from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition's Innovative Health Coach Training Program. And she also received training as a clinical herbalist from the Mid-Atlantic School of Herbalism and the Smile Herb Shop. Welcome, Roz. Well, hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Sorry about that. I, I had my mic off on of, um, unmute and I forgot. <laughs> but I, I, um, I'm excited. I'm excited. We are starting the Healthy Holiday Cooking Series, and I'm excited about it. And tonight, I'm actually going to demonstrate two of my favorite. One will be garlic hummus. Garlic hummus. Now, listen, you can use garlic hummus all year round. I'll, I'll just run in the kitchen and make the hummus and put it with some uh, peppers, uh, or dip with, with broccoli or carrots or some chips. Hummus is amazing. I love hummus. And I am a mm, vegetarian, pescatarian, a little bit of uh, fish, but for the most part a vegetarian. So I like to get my protein from beans. So that's why I love it. So a garlic hummus is so, so easy to make. And it makes a wonderful... Um, makes a wonderful, uh, exciting appetizer for the holidays, for the holidays. Because people come to your house, 
They're hungry. They're already, they listen, they already know it's going to be some good food. But what happens is you get, you get there and the host is not completely ready <laughs> to serve the whole meal. And so having a good hummus with some good bread, and today I'm going to use a non bread, or like I said, you can use tortilla chips or some um, veggies to so make a nice veggie tray and put the hummus in the middle and people can actually dip with it. So I'm, but first, another favorite of mine is pumpkin. This is pumpkin season. It's pumpkin season, pumpkin everything, pumpkin waffles, pumpkin pancakes, pumpkin chips, pumpkin plantains. My husband bought some pumpkin plantains in here the other day. How about some plump pumpkin uh, turnovers? It's pumpkin everything, pumpkin smoothies, pumpkin lattes, pumpkin pumpkin. If you don't like pumpkin, this is not <laughs> your favorite season. But right now, I'm going to show you how to prepare pumpkin pie stuffed croissants, stuffed croissants. So, you know, it, it's, it's so, so, so amazing. It tastes so good. So I'm going to get started. Pumpkin, 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 vitamin C. It's got some keratin in it. Pumpkin is just amazing. It's great for your skin. And so what I'm going to do first is I'm using a pumpkin puree, a pumpkin puree. So you will receive the recipe a little bit um, after this, um, I think tomorrow or some, at some point. All right, so what I'm, what I'm using is pumpkin puree and I'm using one cup of pumpkin puree. Now, mind you, this is virtual. So I'm really, this is half, but go by the recipe when you receive the recipe. But um, I'm using, I'm, I'm cutting it in half because I'm not gonna eat all of this because I'm not serving it. My husband and I, we're gonna eat it, but you know. All right, so your pumpkin puree. Then I'm gonna use vanilla extract, vanilla extract. Now use real, if you can, if your pocketbook allows, because you know, everything has, has really, really gone up. And, um, but if you can get pure vanilla extract, not the imitation one, I just like it, you know? I, I actually love it. I love, I put vanilla extract. Did you know, so first of all, vanilla is, is, is a plant. It's a plant, it's vanilla beans, it's a plant. So this is plant-based. Vegans can use vanilla, vanilla extract, but it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I use it in oatmeal, in my smoothies, protein shakes, all the time, vanilla. All right, the next is pumpkin pie spice. You cannot make a pumpkin pie stuffed croissant without using pumpkin pie spice. And you know, like I said, it's pumpkin season, so pumpkin is everywhere. You can find it everywhere. So we're gonna use about one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. I'm just gonna measure it for you guys. <laughs> Cause I normally just pour it in here. I'm just gonna pour a little bit more. Pumpkin pie spice. Did I say I love pumpkin? Love it, love it, love it, love it. Pumpkin pie spice. And then we're gonna use some cinnamon, ground cinnamon. Cinnamon is um, great for hypertension, it's great for diabetes, and it makes everything taste great. Cinnamon, it's a catalyst. It kind of helps take everything into your body where it needs to go. All right, so we're gonna use one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I particularly, you know, it's several different kinds of cinnamon. There's Ceylon cinnamon, there's Vietnamese cinnamon, and then there's just the regular old regular cinnamon. <laughs> But the uh, Cillian cinnamon is medicinal. It, um, it helps. That's the one that helps with the uh, diabetes and the blood pressure and things like that. Cinnamon. Also, did you know you can sprinkle cinnamon around on a countertop when you have an ant issues? They don't like cinnamon at all. Vietnamese cinnamon is, is a great one that you can use for baking. For baking. All right. Tastes amazing. So this one here is uh, Cillian cinnamon. All right, the next ingredient will be my 100% maple syrup. Now, this is an organic pumpkin spice. 
I told you everything is pumpkin out here right now. Everything is pumpkin. So why not? It's so appropriate to use a pumpkin um, maple syrup, a pumpkin maple syrup, or you can use a regular one, doesn't matter. But I listen, I said, it's a pumpkin croissant. Why not use pumpkin syrup? It just makes sense to me. All right. Now, so we have the 100% maple syrup. And, and by the way, uh, the maple syrup is um, plant-based, you know, maple for coming from a maple tree. So we're using the whole food, the maple syrup plant-based rather than the processed sugar, white refined processed sugar. So it makes it a little bit healthier. It gives you that sweetness, but it's a natural sweetness, sweetener, all right? From, made from a plant and not in a plant. Remember that. All right, then we have the vanilla extract and we have the pumpkin puree, pumpkin spice, and the ground uh, cinnamon, the grounded cinnamon. Now, this is what you can do. You can buy the roll, the crescent roll, and I already opened this because I have it laid, laid out here. But you know, the crescent roll, the dough is in here, or you can buy the uh, sheets of dough and then you cut your sheets as, you, as to how many you want, want to have, want to make, all right? But this particular crescent roll makes eight. I'm gonna do four, I'm gonna do four, all right? Now I have my mixture here. I'm gonna turn my heat on. And then what I wanna do is just mix it, mix it really well. And then I'm going to heat it. It should heat for about 10 minutes, 10 minutes, all right? So I mix it well. So I'm going to pour it in my pot. Let me turn it down. It's going to be disastrous. Ah, oh, that's something about that cinnamon and that vanilla, that pumpkin spice. I wish we were in person. <laughs> so you can smell this. Oh my goodness. It's nothing like smelling. Listen, if you are a recovering sugar addict like myself, this, just imagine this, the, the aroma in the room. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna use a small saucepan and um, I'm using my new ways. And so that's the uh, cooking apparatus here. And so it actually cooks a little bit faster than the 10 minutes, but in actuality, um, I already cooked it over here because this is the thing. You have to, you must, 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 Continue consistently stir because you do not want it to stick to your pan, to your saucepan. So you're going to continually stir until it's mixed really well for about 10 minutes because you're using a regular stove. All right. But also, after it is has cooked for 10 minutes, what you're going to do, what you're going to do is pour it in a bowl, pour it in a bowl, and you're going to put it in the refrigerator. You're gonna refrigerate it for about 30 minutes, at least 30 minutes. You do not want to use your hot or even warm mixture on your dough because it, is, it just will not turn out right. It will not be a good, good thing. So, I'm going to, so I'm going to use the one that I've already chilled, all right? Using the one I already chilled. D, it smells divine already. Now, let me, uh, I'm going to talk about my air fryer uh, convention oven in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and preheat it, start it preheating. So now what you're going to do is just lay out your, your uh, croissant dough, and go ahead and put some filling in there in each one. Now, I really like the dough sheets because you can make them 
large and then cut them. You know, make them make large. You can make them the size that you like. And then you can cut them and put them on your tray. To, you know, even though they're going to be so good, people are going to take more than one. They're going to keep taking them, right? But at least you'll have enough for everyone. And unless you are serving Oprah Winfrey or you're inviting Oprah, a big star, to your house, it doesn't matter how you roll them. You can roll them nicely. And, you know, you, if, you, if you roll croissants really, really nicely, sometimes I don't. I get it, and then I don't. <laughs> sometimes I roll them right, and sometimes I don't. But it doesn't matter because I'm eating it. My family's eating it, and they don't care because it tastes pretty good. It tastes so good. All right, so that's my pumpkin pie filling. Julia, can you see this pretty well? Yeah, everything looks really good. Awesome. All right. And then I'm going to roll it, roll it, roll it. And then you can tuck it like that. I'm going to roll, roll, roll it. You know, you can actually take some, uh, well, I could <laughs> take some classes on uh, YouTube, <laughs> how to really roll a perfect croissant. But, you know, it's not really, you know, like I said, unless I was inviting Oprah Winfrey or somebody, uh, how about, um, uh, what's the girl's name? Rachel Ray, <laughs> somebody like that to my house for dinner. But if I invited Rachel Ray, she would be teaching me how to do it. I'm like, listen, I need a lesson. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. I love it. All right. So they're going to pop in the oven. They're going to pop in the oven. And my oven is on 350. And it's going to go on there for 10 minutes. Let me put it up at the top. 10 minutes. Let me turn it down. Now, this is a convection oven. It's a really, it's an all, all purpose, and I love it. This is my air fryer, which I use the air fryer. Like I said, I am a vegetarian, so I'm not air frying chicken. But I do air fry fish for my husband. I eat tuna, I air fry it. So it has several settings on here. It's bakes, it, uh, it's uh, broils, it can toast. It has, I believe, nine different settings on, um, on, this, on this air fryer. And it's by New Wave. I got it off of Amazon and I simply love it. I use it for um, everything. I don't even use my oven. I have one here at my studio and one at my house. That's just how much I love it. How much we love it, my husband and I. And we have an oven <laughs> in our house, but we use this. It's nothing like having um, a multi-purpose uh, stove <laughs> to do just everything. Yeah, so love it, love it. All right, so while that's in there, baking, baking, baking. 10 minutes, we're gonna say 10 minutes, all right? All right, next is the garlic hummus. One of my favorite garlic hummus. Now listen, hummus, what is hummus made of? It's made of garbanzo beans, garbanzo beans. What's another name for garbanzo beans? Anybody, can, did you, let, let, me, let me see if anybody knows. Can somebody type in the chat, chat? Another name for garbanzo beans. Another name for garbanzo beans. We got Gar chickpeas, another chickpeas, chickpeas. Everybody's saying chickpeas. So far, yeah. <laughs> that's right, because that's what it is. It's chickpeas. Awesome, 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 awesome. Yes, chickpeas. So chickpeas, why? 
because um, what are the nutritional value of, of beans? Beans is, is your protein. You're getting your protein from your beans. So that's all beans, your, your black eyed peas, your navy beans, your kidney pea, beans, your lip, lentils, um, lima beans, any type of bean, azuki, any type of beans, all of them uh, uh, give you protein, give you protein. So for a, a vegetarian like myself, that I don't eat pork, fish, I don't eat all fish. I do eat the worst fish. But anyway, I eat crab and shrimp, that's shellfish. And I eat tuna. But all the other fish I don't eat. So therefore, and I don't have those every day. So therefore, I try to get beans in every day through a soup. You know, you can add beans to a soup. You can add beans to your salads. You can add beans. Just eat beans. I like rice and beans. Yes. Okay. All right. So hummus is a great snack extra, extra snack. So what I'm doing is I'm going to add, it's garlic hummus, right? So you can't have garlic hummus, but I'll have a garlic and I'm going to add one clove of garlic, one clove. Now, is this a clove? And I'm asking some people just don't know. I have run across people, different clients that I have. And when I bring them into the kitchen and I tell them I need one clove, sometimes, they're peeling the whole thing, right? This is a bulb. The whole thing is a bulb and we just need one clove. Now, if you like garlic, you're gonna get a big clove and I love garlic. So you're gonna open it, just open it, pull it up, pull it apart. And I'm getting one nice big clove. I'm peeling the skin off. Now you can use a garlic press if you like. And um, especially if you don't wanna have your hands smelling like garlic, but I don't mind. I love garlic. Garlic is great for everything. Okay, speaking of that, let me ask you a question. As here's, here comes another question. What is garlic, what are the health benefits of garlic? Anybody know? Go ahead and type it in the chat for me. Health benefits of garlic. Some people are typed in. I'll let you know what they say. Okay. I love garlic. I ate a, listen, this is a horror story. I ate a whole clove of garlic one time. I just popped in my mouth and ate it because, you know, well, I was getting ready to tell y'all one of the answers. <laughs> anyway. Like for inflammation, was that the answer? No, that's not what I was going to say, but that's a great answer. It's so a great answer. Not the first answer, though. What else? Another person just said lowers inflammation. Mm hmm Looks like that's all we got so far. Oh, really? All right, so this is one garlic clove. I'm going to drop it in my container here. Garlic is, is, is for cardio. Cardio, cardiac, your heart, heart health, garlic, plenty, plenty of garlic. It helps to uh, decrease the blood pressure. Bring down oh, your blood pressure. Just as you were saying that. What would they say? Someone said lowers blood pressure at the same time as you were saying it. <laughs> Absolutely. It lowers the blood pressure, lowers the blood pressure. Garlic does. And so it's amazing. And also for inflammation and also is great. I was about to tell you, spill it, is that one time I was not feeling well. And I know that garlic helps with, uh, to combat bacteria and viral, you know, infections and colds and flus and things like that. So I ate. I chose to peel a large clove, stuck the whole thing in my mouth and chewed it. And it was a horrible experience. <laughs> it was a, now I still eat the garlic, but I don't eat a whole thing. I may open it, peel it and cut a few pieces and eat that, but not a whole thing. I just couldn't stomach it. It was a lot, it was a lot. All right, so I put my garlic in there because it's a garlic hummus. By the way, the garlic hummus recipe, this is one of my favorites, is in my recipe book. And so it's back here in the appetizers. So I'm using one can, one 15 ounce can of, of uh, chickpeas or garbanzo beans. 
that one has been drained or strained, all right? Then I'm using another can. So it's two cans that we're using, but this can, I still have the water. It still the, uh, has the water in it, okay? All right, next I'm using, now on the recipe that you all will receive, it says raw sesame seeds, raw sesame seeds. And to be honest, I think the raw sesame seeds, I know for sure, raw sesame seeds, um, you can find that at, at all stores and it'll probably be cheaper than what I'm using today. What I'm using today, which I had it already, and, it's, and it, is, it is kind of pricey, but it's called tahini. And all tahini is, is a paste from the raw sesame seeds. Um, so it's just ground, ground, ground. And tahini has a lot of oil because sesame seeds have oil automatically, just like your peanuts and your other nuts. If you open a jar of peanut butter or almond butter, or any type of nut butter, they have a lot of oil. So I'm going to use, let me use this, the tahini. And it's, it's nothing but sesame seeds that's in like a paste form. But you can use your um, raw sesame seeds. It'll still do the same job. Raw sesame seeds. Okay. All right. So I put, it's called tahini, T-A-H-I-N-I. Okay. Now, I'm using one tablespoon of olive oil. Olive oil, this olive oil is a Greek olive oil. I <clears> learned about Greek, you know, you all know I just came from Greece a couple of weeks ago. And um, the olive oil in Greece is amazing. So this is a Greek olive oil. And I'm using one tablespoon of olive oil. And so if you're not, a, um, some people just don't like to use oil because it's fatty. And so you can omit that because you have the oil from your, um, your, your um, tahini. But if you're not using tahini, you may want to go ahead and use the uh, olive oil. All right, we're using one fourth cup of lemon juice. Now you can use a real lemon. The juice of a lemon is going to probably be about two lemons, one fourth cup. But, um, or you can use your lemon juice, all right? We're talking about spending wisely, right? Talking about spending wisely. And then, oh my gosh, y'all, this is smelling. Ah, it smells so good in here. I'm sorry, I keep saying that. One teaspoon of ground cumin, cumin, cumin. Now, cumin is great for digestibility because what happens? What happens with, to some people when they eat beans? Anybody want to share? <laughs> Anybody want to share what happens when the people eat beans? You get gas. What? That's right. Some people get some gas, right? So cumin helps with the digestibility. With, um, for your beans. It helps to actually help you to uh, digest your beans better. So when you're, when, you're ah! when you're preparing your beans, you wanna add uh, cumin in there. You can also add, um, see, some people add seaweed, some people add baking soda to, the, um, to your beans, but it definitely will help uh, decrease the gassy, the gassy and the gas. Pains. But what I want to say is, period, that um, the more beans you eat, the more, you know, the less gas you'll have. Most of the time, your body just has to adjust. If you really haven't been eating a lot of beans just because <laughs> you told yourself at some point, maybe some, some people tell themselves that a chi as a child, I don't like beans. Oh, I don't eat beans. I don't like it. And then so they just don't eat it. And then later on, when you develop a taste for it, like, oh, you know what? That's not bad. I like red beans and rice. I like uh, black eyed peas. I like it. But then your tummy doesn't like it because it's not used to it. And But the more you eat it, 
the, the, the uh, more your, your, your body will get used to it and be able to digest it a little bit better. I had the same problem. I didn't grow up eating beans. I didn't like beans, but I realized, I learned quickly when I became a vegetarian that I needed beans for my protein intake. What does protein give you? Protein gives you energy. And we need that energy. I'm not getting energy from the beef or the pork uh, or uh, the meats, chicken or anything like that. So therefore I need to eat the beans, all right? So in my Vitamix, I have it here. I'm gonna turn it on. We're gonna start off slow and low. Um, yeah, we're gonna start off. That's really slow because it's not on. <laughs> One second. Let me switch up my my uh go over here. Yeah, we're gonna start slow and low. <laughs> That's real slow, right? I promise you, we're good. We are good. Just going to switch up my, here we go. All right. My garbanzo beans. Yes, yes, yes. Now you can add a little bit of sea salt to your mixture if you want to, it's optional. I don't add sea salt, but like I said, it's optional. And, um, I don't add sea salt because I like the garlic flavor. I like the garlic flavor and the cumin flavor. The little lemon, lemon juice is good. Plus, not only that, you don't want to add um, salt to it if, you're, if you have issues with hypertension. If you have issues with hypertension, we're going to stay away from any type of sodium anyway, right? And then I'll, I'll also know that there's a little bit of sodium in that can of beans that you use, not unless you use low sodium uh, garbanzo beans, which they do sell. All right, I'm gonna turn it up some. Yeah, that's in the Vitamix. I'm gonna take my tamper, press it down. Make sure that garlic is gotten crunched up. All right, I just want to make sure the garlic got, got in there. Oh, you all know that I want to lick it. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, no, I think I used this. Oh, that was for my tahini. All right. There's my hummus, I love it. So I'm using non-bread, whole piece of non-bread, but I'm gonna cut my non-bread. And you can use, like I said, you could use um, tortilla chips, or how do you say it, Torti tortilla, tortilla chips, <laughs> or you can use uh, and, and you know what, if you are on a weight loss journey, it's best to just use, I like uh, red bell pepper and just slice the red bell pepper. I like to use uh, carrots or celery, but when I'm, but uh, for my people who don't worry about the bread and like the bread, I love Non bread, non bread, that's the Indian spice bread. So you just cut up your bread, put it around your plate for the guests that are coming. Put it around a nice plate. 
Then you're going to go ahead and put your hummus in the middle. It's nice and smooth and creamy. It made a whole lot, a whole lot. Yes, made a whole lot. And that is your hummus. Let me come around here so you all can see it. Can you see that? Nice, we can, right? and it looks so good. So good, and so now I get to taste it for you. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh my gosh, that garlic just punched me in my mouth. Mm. So I can double dip, because <laughs> it's mine. Awesome, it's amazing, garlic hummus. And one thing I want to say, you can use roasted red pepper. You can use um, olives and make a, I think it's called a, what is it called? You all know it's, it begins with a K. It's when you add olives to the, um, to the recipe. Cala, cala, There's a type of olive know? called, yeah, Kalamata olive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are delicious. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. It's so good. So, so good. All right, here we go. Let's, let's pull out the croissants. Woo! The croissants. OMG. Nice and golden brown. Now, you can cut them in half. Oh, it's still warm. Woo. Hot, hot, hot. I love it. And I'm going to bring it over there so you all can get a close up of the croissants. Nice, right? And it's very hot. Golden brown, beautiful. Golden brown, isn't it beautiful? And just imagine how it smells in here. But you can cut them in half or you can keep them whole. It doesn't really matter because I'm telling you, they're so good. Whoever gets half is going to go back and get the other half. <laughs> so, so you can also go ahead and get keep it whole, right? Yes. And it's too hot for me to taste right now, y'all. But it smells so good. I want to, I, I want to eat it. But you can serve these for uh, appetizer, or you can serve them for with your dinner. You know, most of the time people like I know my husband loves sweet stuff with his food, like um, sweet potatoes and things like that. So he would probably like that. But also you can have it for um, a day after Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving morning if you're doing brunches. Um, and have it, you know, people will have it with their coffee or their hot chocolate, or even how about some apple cider, some apple cider with your pumpkin croissants. Amazing, amazing. Does anybody have any questions at this time? Any questions at all? Any questions? I'm entertaining questions. Recap, questions. No questions in the chat right now, but I, I have one. What would you suggest sure. um, if you weren't going to do this for Thanksgiving? What would pair well with this? These as appetizers for your entree. What would you suggest? You said what would pair well with what for what? If I was going to make these as an appetizer, what do you think they would be a good thing to serve before? Like, what would I want my entree to be? Ah. Uh anything <laughs> so how about so so you are you speaking of if it's not for um during thanksgiving or for the holiday yeah, or just if every it's day not, if it's not thanksgiving day yes every day in the yeah. fall season so you could do always do uh if you if you eat chicken you can bake chicken and chicken and potatoes of course with your uh, nice cabbage or or uh greens some type of green leafy vegetable, kale, but um, it will go with anything. It will go with anything. It's just, uh, um, oh yeah. 
It's good. <laughs> I love pumpkin. Oh, I'm going to have to try them. But let me just say this. This will go with, this will go great with some eggs. <laughs> An omelet in the mornings. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It melts nice. in your mouth. So we do have right. another question. Sure. Other than maple syrup in the pumpkin mix, what would be a good substitute? Well, you could use honey. Um, you can use coconut sugar. Coconut sugar is pretty good. The key to it is not to make it very, very sweet. And with coconut sugar, it's light, but you get the, the taste of the, you taste more of the pumpkin um, spice and the cinnamon, which, which makes it really, really nice. So I would say any other plant-based um, sugar you could use, anything except for uh, your white refined sugar, because it's just not good for you. White refined sugar is, causes all kinds of issues, especially inflammation all over the body. So that's why I like to use a plant-based sweetener. Did I answer the question? Yes, I think so. Yeah, but maybe oh, uh, there's a follow up. Of what about a little raw brown sugar? So, brown sugar is, um, <laughs> I want to say, it's, it's, you can use raw brown sugar. You can, if that's what you have, you can use that. Um, you just wouldn't use as much as you would because like for the maple syrup, you're using one cup. So you would probably use maybe like a fourth of a cup of the brown sugar. What are the um, different types of plant-based sweeteners besides coconut? So coconut sugar, there's date sugar. There is... Uh, Molasses, stevia, stevia, they call it stevia. There's agave. All of those are made from a plant. Um, there's a new one. Oh, um, monk, monk fruit is, is, is a new one that's out now. There's another one too. Someone just told me, one of my clients just told me about I haven't tried it yet though. But those are, are, are some of, of them that, that you can use. I said honey. Honey is not from a plant, it's from a bee, but it's still not um, processed, raw, raw honey. Did that answer your question? Yes, I'm writing them down. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what you have so far, make sure you got them all. I got coconut, dates, molasses, stevia, agave, monkey fruit, and you said um, honey, right? And honey. So it's monk fruit, M-O-N-K, monk fruit. Monk fruit. I had a, yeah. a package that said monk fruit, like a sugar package. It didn't go well on my stomach, though. Well, so you, yeah, that's Does how, it, that's, that's what we... Does it come any other way besides that? It, it comes in the only, I've only seen it in the powder form, the monk oh. fruit oh. in the powder form. Okay. Yeah, so, um, you know, a lot of times when we're trying something new, just mm. try a little bit, a little bit. A lot of times people don't like the stevia because they say stevia has an aftertaste. But right. what happens is our mind tells us that we have to use a whole pack because that's what we're used to. That's how familiar that we're using a whole pack of sugar that comes on the table, but they used to have it on the table before COVID in the restaurants, the little packs. And then, so you needed about four or five packs to sweeten a tall glass of iced tea. So therefore, when you, when you call yourself switching up and said, I'm gonna be a little healthier, I'm gonna use the stevia. And then you put four packs of stevia in there, it's 
definitely going to mess it up. It's not going to be right because you only need a little bit. So when you're trying something new, just try a little bit, grab slow, slow, slow walk it, slow walk it. And then you got to see how, how your body is going to react to it. Sounds good? Yeah. All right. All right. Well, I am done, you all. I am done. If there's not any more questions. It doesn't look like there are any more questions right now. <laughs> yeah, can't wait to make my homemade croissant so they could look like golden brown and tasty. Golden <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna have to um, get an invitation. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about maybe I could. I'm a dip person. Maybe I could find something to, you know, maybe dip it in something or whatever. I'm not sure. The croissant. Yeah, you know, oh. like um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm a dip person, so I'll, I'm gonna try to imagine something else to go with it, you know, on the side. Hmm. Well, I tell you what. Well, we're talking. We're trying to keep it healthy now, because <laughs> I was about to tell you something. <laughs> but we're trying to get keep it healthy. So let me just stop right there. <laughs> All right. Very Sounds much. Good. All right. Well, I really, really appreciate you all um, coming in and joining me tonight. Um, I think I'm back. Am I back next? Next. Wednesday. Yeah, we're back next week. Next week. We're back next week. And I, <laughs> I forget what you, you know, you listen, they keep me straight. You all, Julia and everybody. So uh, you all know what I'm doing next week. Go ahead, hit it. Hit it, Julia. Take it all away. All right. Thank you, Roz. What an awesome presentation. I'm going to make both recipes that we had this evening. They sound I love fall. So anything fall flavored, pumpkin, cinnamon, maple syrup, I'm in. But thank you all so much for joining us this evening. We would love your feedback. Um, there's going to be an email sent out after this presentation that will include the recipes uh, and also a survey. If you complete that survey, you'll be entered into a $25 gift card. Um, if you would like a recording of tonight's presentation, please just email us at wellness at pgparks.com and we'll get that to you. And then again, please join us next week, November 9th from 6 to 7. Roz is back doing another cooking demonstration on holiday peas and mashed cauliflower. So some healthy sides for the upcoming holidays. And that's all we have this evening. Thank you so much. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this virtual healthy holiday nutrition series. For more videos to help you make healthier choices, visit the Department of Parks and Recreation's online resource center at pgparks.com or the Health and Wellness Virtual Library at wellness.pgparks.com. Until next time, be healthy, be well. Thanks everyone. Good job, Roz. That was awesome.